there is only one more Apple Silicon Mac to go. The Mac Pro. With just one more product to go. Mac Pro. I just, I just said that, John Turnus. But that is for another day. Oh no. Oh no, John Turnus. We're talking about it right now. Today, the Power Mac is going to fade into history. For the brand new Mac Pro. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. And it's incredible. We had all these rumors of new G4 cubes, of tall boy Mac minis, jade four die chops. Then Apple introduced the Mac Studio. The M1 Ultra said it was the last of the M1 line. We're adding one last chip to the M1 family. Now, all of those rumors have been obliterated or reset because I think by bifurcating the higher end Mac desktop lineup, by introducing the Mac Studio as the all in none sealed computing appliance, the successor to the 2013 J90 trash can Mac Pro, Apple at the same time very neatly carved out what exactly is still needed from an Apple Silicon Mac Pro, and that's as an extensible user upgradable successor to the 2019 J160 Cheese Grater 2 Mac Pro. Only Apple Silicon has been pretty much racing in the opposite direction from extensible or upgradable, right? Everything is on the die, like CPU and GPU, or on the package, like the RAM, or fused like the NAND storage chips. But does it really have to be? Because Apple's calling the Mac Studio modular, which is a departure from when they called that 2019 Mac Pro modular. But now modular means you can choose which aluminum box you want from the mini to the Max to the Ultra Studio and then pair it with whatever display you want. In other words, the modularity has moved from internal to external because Mac Studio is just way more bang for the vast majority of pro bucks, but the Mac Pro is just very specifically for that tiny, tiny top percentage of pros for whom bucks are no object at all. And they don't just want, but they need an expandable box to fill up their ILM or pixel level studios or to wheel around their film sets. So everything, all of its value, all of its differentiation falls on it being expandable, at least almost, because I think for the CPU, there's still less than zero chance for any kind of socket system. Apple barely if never did that with ye old Intel Xeon chips of yore back in the OG cheese grater days. So one possibility is just super simple if super conservative, and that is an M1 Max based Mac Pro at the lowest possible price point. Like you're basically just buying the case and the flex for that, but then an M1 Ultra and a dual M1 Ultra with eight efficiency cores, 32 performance cores, where they're not fused, but thanks to the performance controllers dispatching workloads back and forth between them, they can still just blow the doors off massively parallel computing tasks, which is a really big part of the whole Xeon enterprise server level appeal to begin with. Single core will still be the same as the rest of the line, only unlike Xeon with their super hot and thirsty Intel server chip thermals, Apple won't have to reduce clock speeds even on a quad M1 Max die, like back in the Intel days where the core i9 iMac single core would just smoke the iMac Pro Xeon single core because like better battery life in laptops and smaller enclosure sizes for desktops is just another massive advantage to having your power draw crap together and more on that in a minute. But less conservatively, we could also be looking at pretty much those exact same configurations but with M2 cores, next generation M2 cores instead of M1, which would give just a ton of performance and efficiency benefits. And you can see my recent video for way more on all of that. Or we can go into full on nerd can dream mode where Apple rolls out their own server class chipset architecture, X1. It could be built to fuse together four M1 Max class type dies into essentially a single SOC presentation, though, I shudder to even imagine how expensive that many transistors at current TSMC yield rates would be in that setup, in that configuration, but more on that in a bit. As to GPU, honestly, probably the same. There's nothing inherently better or worse about integrated versus discrete GPU. Just historically, most integrated GPUs have <laughs> sucked. That is until Apple and AMD with the APUs in the current generation of gaming consoles. So for Macs that are sealed appliances, I think it's just an implementation detail at this point and massive unified memory to the GPU and the massive memory bandwidth that goes with it to the CPU has way more pros than cons. And no, there's no issue with current GPUs underperforming 
which I keep getting asked in the comments, but just isn't a thing because that's not how GPUs work. Just like storage didn't work the way that people were complaining about and benchmarks don't work the way that people were complaining about. For a Mac Pro, where the whole entire idea is extensibility and upgradability, discrete will win because discrete, which is why I hope we will see some new version of MPX or the Mac Pro expansion modules, the ones that we saw on the 2019 Mac Pro, just out with the AMD cores and in with the Apple GPUs. And I don't know how the memory architecture would work or not work, but I do know there will be a lot of trade-offs and compromises. But if we end up in the good place and not the bad place, we'll end up with all the pure performance of a 64 or dual 64 GPU block integrated into the SOC, but something like the expandability of an eGPU on the inside, like an iGPU. That way, if now or in the future, you need even more parallelism for just beyond ultra level workloads, you could get it. And maybe that's not a gen one thing, but a gen two or a gen three thing. But I think if this is really gonna be a Mac Pro, it is something that we'll have to get to at least eventually. And similar, if not the same for the RAM, would Apple go ECC? Could Apple go? Should Apple go ECC? Enterprise server nerds would love error correction on their memory. And maybe that even helps make the case for an X1 variant enterprise server chipset to begin with. But then there's just the capacity. 128 or 256 gigabytes of unified memory is great. It's fantastic. But the 2019 Mac Pro went all the way up to 1.5 terabytes. 1.5 terabytes of CPU memory. And while I would be surprised, maybe shocked even, if Apple Silicon Macs come anywhere close to matching that, at least in the first year, at least right, right out of the gate, the idea of having some way, some mechanism, some architecture that could be expanded over time, some just ingenious or even hella ugly way, which sure comes with a ton of compromises too, would just also better fit the spirit and the purpose of having a Mac Pro. And it's not completely unprecedented because A5X and A6X had off-package RAM as problematic as A5X turned out to be. So I'm not gonna expect it until I see it, but I will absolutely scream when and if I do, we do. Storage, I think, won't be a problem at all because even though Apple Silicon fuses storage for a bunch of security and performance reasons, they've already figured out, Apple has already figured out how to offer an expansion kit for the 2019 Mac Pro, which uses a T2 chip, basically an A10 chip, for exactly those very reasons. And I mean, it is a pain in the ass to do and requires a second Mac running configurator two to complete, but there's absolutely no reason why there couldn't or wouldn't or shouldn't be similar expansion kits for the 2022 Mac Pro as well. Where it gets interesting, at least for me, is a PCIe slots because M1 Max has three USB and three Thunderbolt slots but those get used up real quick by the MacBook Pro and the Mac Studio. M1 Ultra has twice as many because two M1 Macs dies, so six USB and six Thunderbolt. And while I don't think those are used up completely by the Mac Studio, there is not exactly much left on the table either, which might also be another reason to tilt the odds in the favor of an X1 or whatever variant that supports enough PCIe for both, like a half-length slot, slot half length slot would be very awkward. A half length slot for an Apple IO card, which would give you a lot of those ports, but then at least a couple single wide, maybe the same double wide, like a stripped down version of what we got with the 2019 Mac Pro, but hopefully with the exact same rack mounting options, because that's a big part of serving the server market. And yes, all of this will be just beyond expensive even without big Xeon and AMD chips inside. And yes, it absolutely sucks that there won't be a cheaper, more entry-level expandable Mac option, that Apple's decided the best way to provide value for most people is with like a mini or a studio or an iMac. But that seems short-term biased and maybe a longer-term approach would be more balanced, would provide more sustainability at all price points. Besides, even though the Mac Pro will be expensive, Morning Brew is still free. And each day, every day, today's sponsor gives you all the latest in business, tech, entertainment, you name it. Everything you need to start your day in only five minutes. And it's not just that Morning Brew is impeccably curated with the most important stories, though it is, and always arrives ready to read right before you wake up, though it does. It's just so well-written, so snappy, informative, irreverent, energetic, and yeah, completely 100% free, seven days a week, Monday through Sunday. 
Just click on the link in the description and get your daily stocks and crypto highlights and stories like today, where I learned all about Netflix's free fall and then briefly considered helping out Elon to buy Twitter. Yeah, sorry, that was me. It's Morning Brew, it's free. It takes all of 15 seconds to subscribe and it starts your day off smart. Just hit the button on the screen or click on the link in the description and you'll not only get a free newsletter that you'll actually read, but one that you will consistently enjoy. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this playlist for a ton more on all the upcoming Apple Silicon Macs, including a deep dive onto M2's expected performance. So make sure you hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.